So hello boys and girls, it's me again here and uh, we're moving on to task 9 uh, in this video and uh, let me begin with uh, the, the page DF data file page 4 you see this is always where you should start from uh, speaking about uh, task 9 we're going to write a speech here and uh, it's an open day one thing that you really need to bear in mind this is uh, the occasion where we will give the speech, yeah, right? So this is it. And uh, the, uh, we're going to give a brief background about how old people use virtual pets. So you need to know that uh, there are two key words here. First, virtual pets. So this speech gives a, a brief background about virtual pets. And secondly, and equally importantly, uh, we don't want to talk about just anybody using virtual pets. Instead, we want to focus on the old people. All right. So two uh, key points that you need to bear in mind for all time: virtual pets and old people. So with that background understanding, I think we're ready to move on to task nine. So here is the marking scheme uh, for the background uh, from one A to one C. Uh, I'll give you a quick minute here uh, to go over it and uh, if you want you can pause the video here to go over the few points. Alright, so you must understand and uh, that uh, we're trying to give the background here and uh, well one very uh, one point that may have escaped your attention is, is that uh, uh, you have this table from DF4. So because we are concerned with the old people and how they use virtual pets, we may want to include this uh, part of the pie chart. That is the 26% of people who are over 65, the age of 65, who who use uh, virtual pets uh, regularly and uh, so do not do not uh, miss out this point now we'll move on to 2A to 2C which is about why the elderly people get into virtual pets a few reasons uh, three reasons altogether something to do uh, with connecting uh, with the grandchildren, something to do with not being allowed to have a real pet and the third reason being well to keep the minds active. Get a quick second for you, you if you want you can pause your video here to identify your point, don't forget to underline and number your points to show that hey I've got my, uh, my content point here alright so please pause the video here All right, so uh, after part two, uh, we will move on to part three. Um, what elderly people are doing with virtual pets? Well, uh, in fact, uh, the ideas are spread all through from DF5, all right, all through to DF7. You see this extract from a book, yeah, and then if you continue with the data file on DF8 you find the number of points as well here so basically that is it and uh, that's how you get this collecting uh, a, a virtual ranch a farm where you keep pets and you breed and you swap them you make money with your virtual pets and you cross breed uh, the, the pets creating super pets etc so um, this is it basically if you want again you can s uh, pause the video here to go over the content points by yourself in greater detail before I continue alright so let's move on to the uh, conversion table how the the, uh, the marks are awarded so again the maximum content point will be 9 3 3 3 altogether so please uh, do yourself a favor by underlying the points and putting uh, the ticks and putting down the marks 
uh, awarded on the side and then the total content point on the top of the page uh, again the maximum is 9 and uh, so if you get uh, 8 out of 9 please put the numbers on the top alright then uh, I'm going to go down to the marking scheme well not th nothing really special here uh, purely cli cliche things that we already know but uh, again there are a few things that I like to go over with you uh, uh, regarding the appropriate so uh, first it has to be a semi-formal term possibly more light-hearted because it's a speech in the form of a speech so you don't want to make it too formal you want um, your audience to, to, to take in your ideas and you want to make your speech more listener friendly the purpose is to provide information again the opening well usually we say uh, a more appropriate opening would be well good morning everyone well of course you can say good afternoon good morning good afternoon then you introduce yourself and you may call your audience ladies and gentlemen all right so uh, however we don't start with dear no okay we don't say dear because it's not a letter and you don't simply end it with uh, that's the end of my speech or yours sincerely of course that would be completely wrong completely inappropriate but w uh, a more appropriate ending would be something like well thanks for listening or I hope you have uh, enjoy you you enjoy yourself at this open day because if you remember this is an open day all right don't forget to say thank you always be polite to your audience now before we move on to task 10 i'd like to go to uh the the sample with you as i said just earlier as we saw earlier bear in mind that uh, the speech is all always about old people and it's about the use of virtual pet and it is on an open day and uh, uh, you should summarize the relevant information but you should also include a p some personal comments whenever it is possible so for example when you are quoting the 26 percent of uh, users over 60 age, uh, the age of 65 you may want to add a word like notable you may add your personal comment here by saying well what is notable what is uh, surprising is that more than a quarter of the users are over the age of 65 so uh, uh, feel free to be a little bit uh, subjective expressing your personal views here and there because it's a speech you're giving information on one hand but you want to make it more relatable to your audience now one challenge is how you can open and close the speech appropriately I think I just now gave you some ideas I mean we, we, we got some feedback from the Marcus report just now and you will see a sample by me later on what about the weaker candidates well they they start the speech by saying dear guests and close it with simply thanks for listening and they are not completely appropriate and so marks may be uh, deducted from the appropriate area of appropriate now as for uh, keywords like old people and virtual pets uh, will, will be repeated uh, if throughout the speech it, may, it is a good idea to think of alternative ways to address them so how can you call the old people in some other ways how do you address the virtual pets in some other ways that's another challenge of getting this right uh, getting this right well done now here is my sample ladies and gentlemen good afternoon as we said uh, this is a more appro pro appropriate opening We're not particularly complicated you know this is almost like a template uh, expression so virtual pets are gaining popularity everywhere and it's, it's my honor, it's my privilege to be introducing to you details about the phenomenon especially among the elderly people so you see um, here is my introduction and so before I delve into the content points I need to give my audience some, some sort of a background and in the background I deliberately, I intentionally include the keyword virtual pets and especially among the elderly people 
So this is how you can approach a task, and it, it it's not particularly difficult if you think about it. Yeah. So do include some sort of introduction here. And uh, of course, you want to start by explaining the term virtual pet, and so by definition, it is blah 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 blah. And uh, I I start with uh, the phrase first things first. That is to begin with first things first and uh, blah 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 and um, uh, just now I mentioned uh, the, the the fact that uh, you may want to include your personal view here so I'm using what surprisingly more than a quarter of the users are over 65 so this is how, this is how you may f put it now again a very similar tactic to, uh, that I'm using here so I'm trying to use a question to lead in to my next point you may be wondering you may wonder why so if you remember in task 8 I did something like that so uh, 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 well, well yeah if you are also wondering about so you may want to ask a question or think in their shoes the shoes of your readers the shoes of your audience and they may be wondering about the same thing yeah so this is how you may um, move on from one point to another you may also wonder why blah 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 one reason is that blah 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 and they turn to blah 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 also because also because some kind of connection and moreover Alright, uh, yeah. now this is another uh, ta tactic that I'm using. It may sound strange, it may sound unusual, but blah blah blah. Alright, and for one thing, so I try to use this to, I mean, to use these expressions to make it more listener friendly, s to make sure that my audience can follow what I'm saying, and to organize the points step by step, logically, and present them to my audience. Yeah, some may even, some even, even. Yeah, and uh, uh, well. So this is the concluding line, which what you may want to look at to thank you, and I hope you have a pleasurable time at the open day. And as we know, I'm speaking at this open day, uh, uh, open day. So I want to relate my speech to the occasion here. So that, so this is how you can do it quite simply. Now, before we move on to uh, finish this video and move on to task ten, I'd like to go back to this question the key words, the old people and the virtual pets and how can you put them in some alternative ways so if you go back to my sample again this is how so I'm using virtual pets for the first time I'm using the elderly people for the first time virtual pets here again yeah and because I'm trying to give uh, the definition of virtual pets here again quite repetitive yeah uh, virtual pet users and uh, the elderly so the first time we we'll call them the elderly people now the elderly will never say the elderly because elderly is not noun is an adjective so you call them simply the elderly the elderly so that group of people uh, well you see virtual pets here but I'm trying to use another word here the gadgets the gadgets meaning the virtual pets the machines the gadgets help them keep the minds active so apart from calling them the elderly people the elderly I'm also calling them our seniors our seniors alright uh, so uh, and uh, finally, I'm using this word, the true companions, which are the virtual pets, the gadgets, the companions, the digital companions, if you like. And finally, our elders, the elderly, the elderly people, the aged, the old people, our seniors, and also our elders. So I hope this gives you an idea how you may uh, enrich your language and try to bring in some variety there so that you don't simply copy and paste copy from the data file and paste 
those words onto your task so uh, I hope this helps boys and girls and uh, please feel free to take a quick break and we will come back with task 10 later on see you then see you later